today's video is going to be a bit different to the usual videos I post on the channel here, but in the grand scheme of things, it does relate to tech products. And so today and tomorrow, I'm going to make a two-part series. The first in today's video, I'm going to outlay information that you may have not seen anywhere on the internet, and it relates to what is happening at the moment with shortages and also tech products in general. And this has to do mainly with a thing called inflation. And what is inflation? Well, the original meaning of inflation was the increase in money supply. Now, over the last 30 years, especially in the US, Australia, Japan, the UK, and other developed nations, you have seen inflation remain at two to 3%. In the case of Japan, it may have been a little bit lower. And this was described by a lot of economists as healthy inflation. And in fact, if you like to save money and you like to purchase things not on debt or credit, then zero inflation is the best. In fact, deflation is even better because that means the money that you save today will be worth more tomorrow. So two to 3% in my opinion is tolerable, but now we're moving into an environment where inflation is much higher than two to 3%. Even the government official numbers in the US are going north of 5%. And with interest rates at near zero, this means if you are holding on to cash, you are essentially getting a negative compounded return as long as this inflation continues of negative 5%. Though let's outlay in today's video on some information that you may not be aware of. And this was called the Going Direct Reset, which was a paper that was brought out by the BlackRock Institution. They're essentially the biggest investment vehicle in the world that controls over $9 trillion in assets. So let's now analyze this paper, look at what's happening in the market, and then of course, what I think will happen going forward. Are you tired of seeing this annoying activate Windows message? Then if so, today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $14 using the coupon code BFTYC, you can get activated today. Works for Windows 11 Pro too. Link in the description below. So this paper here was released in August of 2019. And in this paper, BlackRock specifically states that inflation has underrun expectations. And so in order to catch up to these expectations, we essentially need to print more money. And that'll essentially make up for the past misses. However, in this paper, they don't state what the inflation targets are. They simply say inflation has been running lower than expected. But in this paper, they state that inflation has been running at around 2% in previous years. So if that's the case, then what is their expected inflation target? Is it 5%? Is it 10%? Because we all know that these numbers are not good for savers. So what we've seen in their graph here with the medium term inflation has followed exactly what has happened over the last 18 months. Inflation has been running much hotter than anyone would have expected, and it's going to continue to run hot until we catch up to what the inflation target is. Now, if we look above that, there's the yields, and they're held at zero until these expectations become consistent with the target being achieved, which basically means that they've dropped interest rates deliberately to increase inflation. And so they're going to keep doing these stimulus measures and keeping interest rates at zero until they get more inflation. But of course, as a consequence of this, we have seen massive disruptions in the system. Inflation by its definition, if it's too high, it will cause massive imbalances in the system. So what you're seeing with that now is house prices going out of control. You're seeing cryptocurrencies go to levels that they've never been at before. And you're also seeing, of course, those imbalances flow through to tech products where graphics cards are grossly overpriced to what they traditionally were. But what further concerns me about this paper is that they essentially have the suggestion of what you guys may or may not know of as universal basic income. And that is in certain populations, the central banks, in this case, the Federal Reserve, would just open accounts with people directly and essentially give them free printed money. And this would in turn create that inflation that they so desire. Though what we just spoke about is actually only the first part of the problem. The second problem has to relate with governments and government regulations. This is one that I'm actually even more concerned about than the first problem 
because in the 1930s, some will say that it was actually government's restriction of trade and increases in tariffs that brought about the Great Depression. In other words, if you restrict economic activity, then the economy will crumble. And so what we saw in 2020 and 2021 was just that, a restriction of economic activity brought about by a virus. So let's give you guys a little example of how this process can create more inflation. Let's take, for example, an employee who works at the wharfs and they work for $750 a week and they drive a forklift and they take containers off ships and then replace those containers on the ground. And let's take a look at if they now have the incentive to not work for $750 a week as opposed to doing their job. Why should I work all these hours when I can just be unemployed and make the same amount of money? And this is the dilemma that's thrown in because now you have a contraction in services being offered, but an actual increase in dollars being made. Instead of those dollars being transferred from the wharf company to the employee, they're actually being created by the government and then given to that previous employee. So it creates massive inflationary pressures on the system and that in turn drives prices up because now you've got even more limited economic activity and just more money chasing those fewer goods and services. So now that we have identified the driving forces behind inflation, we can see over the last 18 months who has been affected. And we can also look at in the next 18 months who is going to be affected. And essentially, if you have been like me, a saver and you like to save money because for whatever reason, I just don't like owing people money. I don't like owing people anything really. I like to own all my own goods. I'm actually one of the biggest losers in the last 18 months due to inflation. Even though I own real assets and they have appreciated in value, I feel like the environment that we're going into hasn't really let my real assets appreciate at all because inflation has eroded the real value of those assets away. And so dollar terms in a currency that's not backed by anything at the end of the day is just a number. And going forward, if there are more shortages, especially things like food and electricity, then we are going to see everyone in general get more poorer. And in relation to this, if we look at the real GDP numbers and we'll throw out some other, I guess what you'd call them discerning facts, if we look at a website like Shadow Statistics, they use the older measures of tracking inflation. They use a 1980s based method and they use a 1990s based method. In both methods, we can see that inflation is running a lot higher than the governments are stating. And so when we couple that with real interest rates being near zero, we can see every year you are losing nearly 10% of the value of your dollar just by holding cash. But what I find much more concerning about these numbers that are being presented is that they don't account for previous trends. In that if we look at the last 30 years prior to 2020, we can see that over the course of these 30 years, globalization, I feel, accounted for a drop in these inflationary numbers. In that when you've got countries now producing goods in mass and with bigger factories and what's essentially known as better economies of scale, that essentially, in essence, is a deflationary factor. But I feel like in 2021, that has reached a peak. In other words, a factory can't produce things any more efficiently than they already are in 2021, which means that going forward, if we print more money coupled with a peak of globalization, prices will only rise much faster than they previously have in the past. But here's the final curveball that I'm going to throw into the equation. And this is to do with the actual government spending in relation to the percentage of GDP. In history, we have never seen this level be so high. In fact, all of the GDP government spending accounts for over 40% of that in 2021. Now we couple that with the fact that GDP growth itself in nominal terms is predicted to be in the US, for instance, a little over 6%. But if we look at those inflation figures on the real inflation numbers, and we see that they're going at 5% from the government themselves, or if we look at shadow stats, uh, eight or 12% numbers, depending on which measures you're using, you can actually see that real GDP growth itself could be in fact declining. Now couple that in with the massive amount and unprecedented levels of money printing that's been used to get this GDP growth. If we're printing all this money to get negative real GDP growth, then that spells that they're going to have to keep printing more and more money exponentially in order to achieve very little, if any, economic growth. And so to finalize today's video and going forward, 
in order to see what is going to happen to the economy, we simply now have to look at government spending and also Federal Reserve policies and the money printing that they're doing. If they decide to increase the money printing even more, then we're just going to get even more inflation. If they decide to reduce the money supply, then we're also going to see a massive crash. So it all depends on which way the governments are going to go. But we've already seen and established a trend that exists. And that is in order to get the same limited amount of economic growth, they're actually going to have to print even more amounts of money than we've previously seen. And those numbers, if you guys haven't been looking, are already horrendously high. So now going forward, here's where we relate all this information into a simple analogy and simple recommendation that you can take home. Now, this is not financial advice. I do have to put this out there. It's just what I'm doing personally. And that is, I feel we are going to be experiencing bigger dips and bigger highs in relation to this roller coaster ride, which I only feel has just started. So to relate this back to a tech product, whether it's a new tech product or if it's a used tech product, if that price comes back to levels that were pre 2020, say for instance, an RX 6600, which by 2019 standards was a bad deal. I wouldn't be recommending that card in 2019 if those prices of 2019 existed in 2021. But due to the environment that exists now, in my review of that card, I basically said just that. It's not a great card, but if you can get it to close to MSRP, then you should get it. And I did exactly that in Australia. I bought one of these cards at 560 Aussie dollars, and then a few hours later, it sold out and the prices went up because that's the environment you're living in. That roller coaster where if prices are cheap, then you should buy things. Then if prices are expensive, try and find something else to purchase because basically the money itself is devaluing as time goes on. And so this basic trend is that your dollar today will purchase much less than it would today as it would in five years time. Anyhow guys, with that aside, I hope you enjoyed part one of today's tech yesonomics video if you did be sure to hit that like button also let us know in the comments section below what you think of prices at the moment not just in relation to tech but also in relation to a few different things because we've got the question of the day here which comes from zachary schwank and they ask have you checked out the intel core i3 10 100 it's pretty good but i'm not sure about the other core i3s so I've talked about the Core i3-10100 in the past, and actually we're gonna talk about this in part two, where we talk about tech products and what you can do in this current environment. And I feel like the 10100 is one of the best buys in the new market right now that you can get, hands down. In itself, it's better than a lot of the older i7s because it's newer, carries better IPC, and it's got four cores, eight threads. So this CPU is an absolute bargain, I feel, in this current market. That's just my opinion. Anyway, hope that answers that question. But also in the meantime, I will close out this video and state that if you are holding on to cash, there may be opportunities that come around due to this roller coaster ride that exists. But I will caution because I care about each and every one of you guys, especially those guys that have supported me over the years and believed in me to allow me to keep reporting on YouTube videos. I will say that just look at your current situation and say, what could I not be without if this product was to no longer be sold. For instance, for me personally, I've stocked up on baked beans, I've stocked up on tuna. It's a cheap, long shelf life food. So in case something happens, if there's a shortage of food, for example, then I'll be okay for the coming months. Even though my diet won't exactly be the best diet in the world, I'll still be happy to not be out on the streets starving. So in closing out this video, it may be time to take a step back and look at what you can't live without as opposed to what is on your wish list. And as always, the age old saying goes, be careful what you wish for. In this case, the Federal Reserve and the central banks, they're wishing for that inflation, but they may just get a little bit too much of it and it could come back to bite them. Anyhow, guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech, yes, anomics content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Thank you.